Hi, this is the CAD CAM Lessons channel and in this video I will show you how we can create holes in FreeCAD. FreeCAD is a completely free 3D modeling program that anyone can use. FreeCAD can be used both for hobby and commercial purposes. In FreeCAD we can for example prepare models for 3D printing or for collaboration with other 3D CAD systems. This is because FreeCAD allows the export of created models to the STEP format which is a universal data exchange format between different CAD CAM systems. So when collaborating with other people, we can also use FreeCAD. And as I mentioned, it is a completely free tool and we can use this software even in a company. Before we start, just a quick note, you'll find links to my FreeCAD mini courses in the description. It's also a great way to support the channel. Now let's get started. Now let's go to FreeCAD and I'll show you a way to create holes in this program. We start a new project as a parametric part because we usually create 3D models in this module. Now I will create an example 3D model here. I will create a cuboid block with dimensions of 100 by 70 millimeters. Okay, and based on this sketch, I will create a solid with a height of 25 millimeters. The first way to create holes is to create holes during the sketching stage. If we are creating a model that will have through holes with a constant diameter, we can place these holes in the sketch. I will now go to edit the sketch. For example, we create a hole with a specific diameter and a specific location. We simply define the dimension and location of this hole. And now this hole is created in the solid. This is the simplest way to create holes. If the holes are through holes, we can create them this way. If, for example, we need to add another segment to such a hole, we can create another sketch, for example, on this face. We will create the next part of the hole using external geometry to precisely determine the position and diameter of this hole. Okay, this didn't work correctly here, so I select the circle, press the D key to define the dimension, and enter the dimension value. Now we use the pocket operation. We can specify the depth of this pocket, and this is another way we can create holes. We can use this operation, the pocket operation, to create holes based on a sketch. We simply create the sketch of the hole. and use the pocket operation. Here we specify the hole depth or we can use an appropriate pocket type such as through all and create a through hole. And if we need to create another segment of the hole, we create another sketch. And as in the previous case, we can use external geometry and simply create another circle. And based on this circle, we add another pocket operation. These are the easiest ways to create holes, but in FreeCAD, we have something called the hole wizard. Based on a sketch, we can create standard holes. To do this, we create a sketch and define the location of the centers of the circles. Actually, the diameter of the circle doesn't matter. The location of the center point of the circle is important. We can dimension the diameter, but we don't have to. The location of the points defining the center of the circle is what matters. We can dimension the position of these points. We can do this using constraints and dimensions. Okay, and here we have the defined position of the hole centers, but the sketch is not fully constrained. As I mentioned, the diameter of the holes is not necessary, but for a fully constrained sketch, we can define a diameter and the sketch will simply look a bit better. By defining the circle diameter at this stage, we can visualize the approximate diameter of the hole being created. So now I have the whole sketch created, and as I mentioned, the position of the hole center is important here because the hole will be created based on the center point of the hole. We will do this using the whole operation. We select this operation, and as you can see, even though we defined a specific hole diameter in the sketch, the hole diameter here is different. We define this hole diameter using parameters. Here we can enter the diameter manually, or we can use standard profiles. We can choose, for example, isometric regular profile. 
And here we can specify a particular type of hole, for example, a hole for an M10 screw. We can also specify the hole type, for example, counterbore. And then the hole will be created in this way. What we did in the first case using two operations, in this case we did using one operation. So if you are creating such standard holes, this can be very useful. At this moment, the hole depth is set to a specific value, a depth of 25 millimeters. But if we decrease this, the depth of the hole also decreases. And here we can specify whether we want a flat bottom or a drill tip. We also have a parameter here that allows us to specify the hole depth so that the depth of the hole is either up to the cylindrical part of the hole or up to the drill tip. This is how we define the parameters. We can use standard values here and the holes will be created in this way. Of course we can change these parameters. And okay we can create holes this way. And in this case, in the case of the hole operation, one more thing is useful because we can create threaded holes. Here I will also create an example circle, I won't dimension it. Okay, I select the whole operation. Here I select isometric regular profile, for example, M10. And I would like to create a threaded hole. Here we select the option so that the thread is created on the model. We can also select the option to update the view, or we can simply click OK. We wait a moment, and the thread is created on the model. So, as you can see, when it comes to creating holes, we have several options. The simplest option is creating sketches and using the pocket operation, or if we create standard holes, we can use the hole wizard. Not everything in this hole wizard may work perfectly, but in some cases, it can certainly be much easier and much faster than creating individual sketches. Another way to create a hole is to use the groove operation, for which we need a sketch of the hole's half section. I will create a datum plane here between these faces. Okay, here, the plane between these faces turned out a bit skewed because the area of these faces is not equal. The area of one face is smaller than the area of the other face. Therefore, we will do it this way. I select this face and holding the control key, I select this face and based on this, I will create a datum plane. Okay, now everything is fine. So, we have a datum plane, and now I will create a sketch on this plane. Okay, or we will do it a little differently. I will increase the dimension of this solid so that there is simply more space for the hole. Now I select this plane and choose Create Sketch. And here we will create the half section of such a hole. We can do this, for example, using a polyline. And okay, here the datum plane obscures the solid. And I cannot create reference geometry. Therefore, I will turn off the section view and create reference geometry based on these edges of the solid. And now I switch to the section view and we will create the section of such a hole. Of course, we will create a half section here. Okay, this half section must be a closed profile. Okay, I won't dimension this anymore. I just want to show the principle here of how we can create such holes. And okay, we have this sketch. And now, based on this hole, we create a rotation in the solid by removing material through rotating the sketch around a selected axis. And here in this case, it is the groove operation. When we select this operation, the vertical sketch axis is chosen by default as the axis around which this sketch will be rotated and material removed. In this case, we must use the Select Reference option. And now I would like to select a line on the sketch. However, as you can see, this line is obscured by the solid. Therefore, we will simply create an axis of symmetry, and so we will do it this way. I select the solid in the feature tree. I press the spacebar to turn off the visibility of this solid. We can also turn off the visibility of the datum plane, and we have the sketch visible. I would like this line to be the axis of symmetry, and here we have an option called create a datum line. Select this option, 
and based on this line an axis of symmetry was created. Now I turn on the visibility of the solid, select this sketch, choose the groove operation, and here I select the select reference option. I point to this axis as the axis of symmetry around which the sketch will be rotated to remove material from the solid. We click OK and in this way we have created a hole. Regarding this method, at first it might seem a bit over-engineered, and indeed for this example if we are creating such a hole, it might be a bit over-engineered, but in this example I wanted to show you the principle of how this operation works. If you are creating your own 3D models in FreeCAD, you might encounter a situation where creating a hole using this operation will be the only way to create the hole. This specific example is very simple, but sometimes situations arise where we must use this method. And okay, we will finish here. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to this channel.